Hey, this is Eric from CoachesTrainingRoom.com. Welcome back. This is video two of our three-part video series. Video one covered the one critical strategy to becoming a successful soccer coach. Here in video two, we have three jam-packed sessions we're gonna walk through with you. Mark specifically is gonna go step-by-step -step through these animations, so you don't wanna miss it. Make sure you watch this all the way through. I can guarantee you're gonna get some value out of these sessions and trainings that he shows you today. Take it away, Mark. Hey, this is Mark from CoachesTrainingRoom.com and today we're going to look at the three essential components of an effective practice. Now, before we go any further, it's important to remember that some teams may only get the chance to practice once or maybe twice per week, so it's very important that we're making the most of this time. So, I'm going to run through a hypothetical practice situation aiming to begin to correct an area for improvement that I've noticed during my team's previous game. So, I would start every practice with a typical warm-up and I'm a firm believer that every player should warm up with the soccer ball at their feet. Anybody over 11 years old it's important to add a dynamic stretching element to this warm-up but generally focus your warm-up touches to suit the topic in hand. For, for example a dribbling session you might consider dribbling with the ball and then running with the ball so changes of speed using different part of the foot to control the ball and so on. So the scenario that I'm going to address today is my players are perfectly capable of passing the ball but they often um, get caught out watching their pass instead of watching play develop and actually making things happen with their movement off the ball. So the first key element of the every effective practice would be practicing the technique under no pressure. So this session that we're looking at here is designed to get players to notice their surroundings be aware of changes in space, movement of players and their passing options at all times. This is a really great opportunity. This part of the session is a great opportunity for the coach to really get in there and start to correct individual technique. So the drill is essentially five cones. Four players per five cones, so there is one cone that is free at all times. One player starts with the ball and they pass to an available player. And what I'm then asking them to do is move to the free cone. So once they've passed, they're now able to move to that free cone. For the person receiving the ball, that free cone has now moved. So they're passed to another free player. They would have to notice where that free cone was now, where the space had opened up on the field, and move quickly to there. Now, for this to be effective, I want this to be quite fast-paced. So I want players to get into habits of trying to think of their next move before they've received the ball, so that all they have to do is focus on a good first touch, and they're playing that ball off into the space that they wanted to. So really try and encourage your players to think about their pass before they receive it. That will obviously have an effect on how they control the ball and where they pass off to. Now the second element is to test the learning under passive pressure. So you're allowing every opportunity to succeed and build their confidence by actually increasing the difficulty in increments and stages. The game we're looking at here uh, pits a team of defenders against a passing team and the players pass unopposed for maybe four or five passes, depending on the number of players that you actually have participating. Once they've made the set number of passes, one defender is allowed to enter and try and win the ball back. So now we have a numbers-up situation, maybe five attackers against one defender. And again, players carry on from there. They attempt to make four or five more passes, and once they've done that, another defender can enter. And we're going to carry on playing, so we're going to get more defenders in there, so the difficulty level is increasing as we go and we're hopefully going to play until there are even numbers. Now if the ball goes out or the ball is won by the defenders don't be afraid to step in perhaps stop the game at that point and allow the players to discuss what went well, uh, what went not so well, why did the defender win the ball back, what could we do a little differently this time. Um, this is often a better way to check for learning as it allows you to see that they're understanding that they're actually absorbing that they're realising what the, the perhaps the mistake was in that situation. We're not really looking to point fingers, we're talking more as a team. What what could we do better next time? Um, this obviously allows players a chance to think about it and to actually learn from their teammates as they go as well. For every session it's important to stick with one theme consistently. So if you're focusing on passing, make sure that your focus is passing from start to finish. Same with dribbling, same with an attacking session, make sure it's consistent start to finish. So finally what we do is we finish with a conditioned game. So full pressure environment, a game setting where we're focusing on 
giving a reward for for using the the right technique that we've been focusing on and don't be afraid to stop that game at any point and actually bring it back to the basics so what do we do in the start of the session how did that help us get to this point now what could we maybe do a little bit differently about this and and actually get a little bit more success rate out of what we're doing so what we're focusing on here is having two teams against each other and the the way to score points is actually by completing passes to a target player so whichever team is in possession of the ball their job is to make two maybe three or four passes amongst themselves while the ball's in play now at any one time they could give the ball back to one target player but to score a point, they would have to go from one target player, make four passes infield, and move it across to the other side. Again, once we've got to the other side, the game would just move back on itself again. So the ball back infield, four more passes, and off to the other side is another point. Now, if the other team wins the ball back at any point, they're now in control of the ball. What they need to do is get the ball quickly to a target player, and actually then begin scoring points for themselves. Don't be afraid to create a numbers up situations to begin with here. So you might have maybe five players against three players just to have an increase in success rate to show the reasons why we would do this, why it's beneficial to move into these open spaces created in a, in a numbers up situation and ultimately to score points and show them the benefit of that. Hey, we hope you enjoyed video two of our three part video series. Click the link just below to download all three sessions that Mark went through today. Click like and comment below with the sessions that you would like more of as a coach, whether that's more passing, dribbling, defending, shooting, futsal sessions. Comment those below. Mark and I read each and every comment, and we'll respond if you have any questions. Video three coming up. Mark and I are very excited to share with you the top three learning styles for players. And we're also going to have a huge announcement in video three. So make sure you keep a lookout for that email, and I'll see you there.